Oh, hey. Well, welcome back to another episode of Mr. Rotter's Neighborhood. Uh, I was actually doing some homework here for you guys. Uh, one of the big things that, uh, that it takes to get a quadrant jet right is what we're going to cover today. Uh, yesterday, we got our quadrant jet for our Suburban screwed back together. Uh, I got it thrown on the uh, truck and started up and just a basic adjustment on the idle mixture screws and uh, an idle RPM with a vacuum gauge. And uh, now we're kind of... We're going from the ballpark to the pitcher's mound and hopefully to the home plate here soon. Um, but one of the big things that I, had, I remembered that has been essentially a lost art um, is uh, the adjustment of the choke. Uh, adjusting the choke on a quadrant jet seems to be a big pain in the butt for a lot of people. And uh, that was one of the big things, the big movements to why to go to electronic fuel injection. Um, if you haven't noticed, electronic fuel injection really provides very minimal, uh, if anything, over a carburetor um, in regards to uh, performance and drivability, as long as the carburetor is tuned correctly. Uh, the biggest downfall was most carburetors were not tuned correctly uh, or maintained. It was more or less just get in, turn the key and go. And when they stopped going, oh, the carburetor is a piece of junk. Well, no, it, it literally took a little bit of maintenance on your part. Uh, and so um, that's what kind of led to electronic fuel injection. But today with electronic fuel, fuel injection being so, um, let's say finicky, or uh, works great until it doesn't, and then it's costly, unrealistically costly. Um, you know, fuel pumps costing in the neighborhood of $1,000 or $1,200, and if you had the dealer replace it your, uh, themselves, Holy cow, does that price increase exponentially? And that was one of the great things about the carburetor. I could literally go buy everything I needed to rebuild this carburetor from the parts store for less than 50 bucks. Everything. That includes the fuel pump, the carburetor rebuild kit, the float, and the needle and seat generally comes in the rebuild kit. You just need to have a little bit of know-how, but a majority of it is all an adjustment. And that's what's great about the carburetor. The carburetor is infinitely adjustable for its practical use. So uh, back to where we're at today, we're gonna adjust the choke. And the startup was the biggest thing that I've ever noticed over a carburetor where fuel injection wins. The cold start procedures, the warm up procedure, always hands down uh, way better right uh, across the board but uh once it's warmed up there really isn't that much of a difference between the two as long as your carburetor is in in peak physical condition and it's uh it's been adjusted properly there really isn't that much of a big difference um i would have to say the roller cam provided much more of a difference but today i'm going to show you how to adjust the choke so what i have here is what comes in a basic rebuild kit for just about every quad jet carburetor. Uh, in our case, ours is a uh, 1978 Buick 350 carburetor. And most carburetors are listed based on the stamp numbers on the side of the carburetor. If you wanted to follow along and find out what we're doing, uh, our carburetor number for our Suburban is 170-58241. Nothing special about it, it's just a 78 Buick 350 carburetor came on with a saver. Um, it has been converted to electric choke. And uh, let's see, what was the other thing that I've done to it? Um, besides converting it to electric choke, it has the secondary choke pull off has been removed. Um, it's not really that necessary since it is an electric choke. These carburetors at that time in 1978 were all what they called gas tube choke which had a, uh, essentially a tube that went down into the intake manifold and was heated up by the exhaust um, to provide heat to the choke, which was more or less a, like a choke stove. And once it heated up the gas tube, um, the, uh, well, it's a bimetallic spring element inside the choke housing would expand and it would cause the choke to come off. Now, in our case, since it is electric, it works just like practically just like any other GM electric choke. Um, those trucks were all pretty much electric choke from like 79 on up. And uh, 
it, it requires you to have a couple of things before it will apply electricity to the choke, and that is uh, one of them being oil pressure. You have to have oil pressure sending unit that uh, allows for the choke operability. So when you hit the key and, and you know if you're sitting, let's say you're sitting still, and you have the uh, the radio playing, you had to have an accessory or the key on position to do such. If you had it in the key on position, it didn't require your um, it didn't require your oil pressure to apply the electricity to the choke. The choke would continually heat until it either burned up the element or the truck wouldn't start because you sat there long enough that the, it had cooled off, but the choke was still wide open. And so uh, it wouldn't start well and you'd flood the vehicle. So uh, today though, since it is an electric choke, we're gonna go ahead and adjust it. We're gonna try to get the basic procedures. What I'm looking at here in your, in your documentation that comes with the rebuild kits is you find the model of carburetor that you have on here, which ours being a 78 Buick 350, and it doesn't have the numbers for it specifically um, because it just there was so many models of carburetor at the time, they kind of just made it simple across the board. If you had a 78 or 79 Buick, or it's actually 350X engine, which is if you look at the VIN, is the Buick. So the HJ and X are generally the Buick from 75 to 80. Uh, which was the last production year. It gives you all of your specifications to get the carburetor kind of dialed in to begin with so that you're within the ballpark. Now we did these yesterday to get the carburetor just kind of, like I said, within the ballpark of the choke adjustment. Um, hopefully it's better than that on drivability. But for the choke adjustment, um, it gives our, it lists out everything that we needed to know and we set it originally to this, uh, the factory specifications because that's the metering rod and jet uh, combination that we went with initially. So, um, but if you want to know where to get this somewhat in the ballpark, this is where it comes in these instructions here. And the only setting on here is, uh, it says 350. X engine and it gives our, our float level which we got set correctly an accelerator pump adjustment where it needs to be on the rod um, the choke rod itself in angles uh, which or which degrees I'm sorry in which degree the choke angle works and then under choke setting it says one in R which is one notch right if you look at the, uh, the carburetor choke housing Here's an electric choke housing for a carburetor. You see the little uh, dots and dimples there. This is a replacement piece that is not necessarily a GM piece. If it was a GM piece, it would have notches on the face of this as well. And what you do is you loosen these three screws Don't and, and make sure you're holding this because this is a spring. This is a bimetallic spring in here. It's under tension. Since, uh, since yesterday, the we had a cold front come through it's the perfect time to adjust our choke instead of starting it up and taking off and letting it warm up on the road the best thing to do is try to adjust it now to where later down the road we don't have to adjust anything um so generally you can do a choke adjustment when it's it's cold and that's the best time to do it so on these carburetors and there normally would be a choke pull off here with a rod that's attached to your secondary air door and is worked here by this bimetallic spring inside, okay? This one's been removed, uh, but it just allows for ease of seeing how this thing functions, okay? So there's three adjustments that you really are primarily concerned with when you're talking choke adjustment. One being the clocking of this black face uh, within the housing, okay? So you tighten it going, counterclockwise and then loosen it by going clockwise and it applies more pressure or less pressure to this bimetallic spring inside here normally what you want to do is you want to tighten this uh, counterclockwise 
until you see the choke door close all the way. All right, and with the, uh, the choke pull off, that's another thing, I gotta go get it so I can show you, but. All right, so with this, when you just adjust this to where it closes, okay, that's what you want. All right, and then you kind of tighten it down and then you should look here and it'll show you the notches, okay? And then there is no notches on this face, like I said. Um, but you do have these, the dimple marks here, uh, this, which is only half of what you need. There's generally a mark here somewhere on the face, but there's not on this, on this cheap replacement cover, okay? Then there's a screw here at the bottom, which adjusts the tension um, for the cam. Now this is your high idle cam down here, and how this cam works is, if you can see in there, um, there's a little arm that props against this linkage here. And that's what operates your high idle adjustment um, for your startup. So when you first press, you get in the vehicle, you press the gas down one time, it sets the choke, but it also primes it with the accelerator pump, which is missing here. But it primes it with the accelerator pump and closes the door for the choke, um, allowing all the tension from the bimetallic spring to close this choke door. Okay, you don't generally, you should not need more than one accelerator pump um, pressing for it if you have it adjusted anywhere within the ballpark. Okay, and then you got an adjustment here and the choke pull off, which I'll get the choke pull off. Okay, so here's what a choke pull off looks like for this 75 liter carburetor. Uh, the linkage arm sits in there like that. And you would think, well, how does this thing even work with, it's only operating the secondary air door. Well, kind of, sort of. If you look, there's a little arm right here and this arm sits in this linkage assembly. And that's what kind of operates your choke somewhat. That's why they call it a choke pull off. So what happens is when you have this in place, like so, and you see it's a vacuum diaphragm with a port that actually normally goes up to this missing port here. There's, a, there's normally a, one of these fittings in here. And then what happens is you start it up and vacuum is applied to this vacuum module, right? The vacuum module then retracts because it's under vacuum. And what it does is that you can see the linkage for the choke moving, okay? So when it does that, you see the arm coming up and down for the choke, the choke rod arm. Okay, when it starts going up and down, or when it just goes, because it'll retract like this, it'll actually just go up. It opens the door a little bit. So what happens, if you think about it in in uh, as the i guess is the domino effect of when you start the vehicle you start it up chokes fully closed vehicle fires as soon as it fires it applies vacuum to this bubble the bubble retracts pulling the linkage backwards pushing the arm up opening this choke door so that the air fuel ratio goes from like six to one to ten to one okay and that way the vehicle will run better, it'll run longer. It started simply, but yet it's still running good, okay? Now it won't run great until the entire engine is warmed up and it's at operating temperature. But for this, the choke adjustment, this is as simple as it gets, okay? So when it starts up, the vacuum diaphragm retracts, moves the linkage, the linkage or the choke rod comes up, opens the door just a little bit to allow more air in, less fuel. The vehicle then will be running on the high idle cam. Okay, and that's what's gonna hold it at say a high idle. So you would want this adjusted probably around, uh, let's say a thousand to 1100 RPM because it should run there for, oh, at least 20, 30 seconds to where it's fairly warm. Um, it starts to get some build up, some heat in the engine. And then once the uh, the high idle circuit, once the, uh, the uh, bimetallic spring in the choke has actually started to apply pressure against the high idle circuit, when you go in there and operate the linkage, the linkage, when you kick this, when you drop the throttle back, it kicks the choke off of the high idle circuit. 
all right? So that's when the engine's up to operating temperature generally. So it works as you go down the road. That's why a carbureted car, if you press the throttle one time, start it up, it'll go up to 1100 RPM. You go inside and let it run for 10, 15 minutes, you come out, it's going 1500 RPM. Well, that's because now the engine's up at operating temperature. It doesn't need as much fuel as what the choke is delivering. So the engine speed goes up. So now we're gonna practically apply it. Okay, back out here at our subject Suburban. The basic things that I've already done here is we followed the instructions uh, kind of to what we kind of assumed was the right thing here. I'm gonna get a finger out of there. There is, we've tried to figure out where one notch to the right is on our choke housing. It makes it kind of difficult because um, there's no notches in this replacement one either. Um, making it kind of difficult to, to get an idea, but all I did was loosen the three screws and then I turn this backwards until the choke closed, okay? That's what you wanted to see, the choke door closed. But our choke is not set at the moment. So the easy thing to do is, like I said, it should start right up with just one pump of the gas. Uh, otherwise, something's not set right. So all you're looking at is, we just need to rack the throttle back one time. Don't give it the beans or anything like that. You're just trying to set the choke and prime it with some fuel. Okay, now our choke door is completely closed. All right. We've primed it with fuel. And as you can see, everything's closed here. There is a very little gap. Now, with the choke properly set, if we want to go through the, the functionality of the choke pull-off, this is what's going to happen. It starts up. Okay, so your lever starts to move in. It's going to pull against that choke housing there. Okay. Watch the choke housing. If you can see the choke door as I actuate this, the choke door comes open. There's your playing card uh, adjustment, okay? Now we might be a little bit lean, we might be a little bit rich, but it looks like it may be a little bit lean. So what, you gotta think of how this is gonna work. It's not running right now. If we go in there and start it up, what's gonna happen is it's gonna open up the door just like we showed you, okay? There it is. So if this is a little lean, what'll happen is, is it'll start up and then it'll start to stumble as it starts up. If it's rich and this door doesn't open properly and you start it up, it'll run and then it'll start choking out. You can tell it's starting to get rich. It'll get black smoke coming out of the exhaust. It'll start running like crap. In this case, if it's a little bit lean, the only thing that's gonna happen is the idle speed's gonna drop down a little bit and it'll have a difficult time running. Okay, well, it probably won't be even that bad, to be honest with you. But we're also looking for, it should start up and run at 1100 RPM, okay? If it doesn't, a little screw down here at the bottom, that one right there below the choke pull off and below the choke housing, which you can, there we go. I got it at the center of the screen now. The one facing toward the front of the engine is your idle speed adjustment screw for the high idle cam. All right, so that's what, between these three things working together, you have this adjustment here on your uh, choke pull off, which is how you get your playing card adjustment. If you look, there's a, there's a thread, it's essentially a threaded uh, arm that you move back and forth by turning this screw, that's it, okay? And then you have the adjustment of the choke face, which it's already in, in the ballpark, and then your high idle speed adjustment screw, okay? All right, so we're gonna fire it up, see what happens. We've already given it one pump. Let's see what happens. I brought my screwdriver just in case we need to adjust some stuff or get crazy on it.
she's cold today. All right. Now I haven't pressed the gas yet at all. All right. All right, so now we might need to give it a little bit more gas or it's flooded. I can't quite tell. I'd say she's flooded. Let me turn them wipers off. things going on that's wrong here all right first things first was it flooded really easily so i'm telling what's happening since we have our uh adjustment screws fairly close we need to get on this quick before that choke really heats up what i do think is going on here is it's not opening the throttle blade far enough at all so we're going to adjust the high idle screw because it should be idling right now at around 1100 rpm while our, stoke, our choke is still actuated. Let's see what our RPM is now. And as you can see, there's a little bit of white smoke coming out, so it may be rich. Okay, we're at around 800 RPM. Let's attack this uh, screw a little bit more. RPM. That's actually probably pretty good. I'd leave it right there. Okay. And it's a little cold out here. It's probably 35 degrees. It's not that bad. I'm sure you, some of you folks up north, it's like minus something already. Ideal time for the choke to actually come off is when the engine's up to operating temperature. Right now, it's still it hasn't even moved off of zero. Okay, and right now it's already starting to build a little heat up in the engine because we set it at a thousand, and now it's already almost 1,100 uh, RPM that it's idling at. It will continue to go up as the engine warms. Okay, so. Choke, or I mean, uh, it's still cold, cold, cold. Um, our oil pressure is kind of indicative of that. So, you know, that's 60 pounds of oil pressure, almost 58 pounds. Buicks don't like <laughs> a lot of oil pressure. Um, usually around 80 to 100 pounds, they start kicking the filter off. So, um, this is good right here. <laughs> but it is, it is a 540 motor oil. So, I did that because of the uh, cooler temperatures in the in the fall winter spring time uh, will change when we start going back to a lot of miles in the summer on this thing it will change back to a 1540 motor oil from rotility but this is a 540 full synthetic uh, rotility six uh, which is for some reason right now really hard to find okay so back to our tech we're still looking at 1100 and it is going to take a few minutes for it to warm up.
tell it's starting to get well the choke is getting warm at least um because i just knocked it off the high idle it's actually on the secondary idle speed uh, right now of the uh, of the choke there is multiple notches in that thing so it should be around 750 or so now at 800 all right so we're at 800 if i let it warm up for a few more minutes it'll drop down to uh, our normal 750 idle speed and as you can see the temperature is starting to come up on the gauge here so now we're no longer at zero we're sitting at what does that say 100 degrees maybe 80 degrees something i can't read it I'm where the the arm is directly on top of whatever the number is so it's uh, i believe 80 or 100 but we're almost ready to hit the road now i'm going to leave the air cleaner off so i can make some adjustments to the adjustable part throttle and stuff like that because uh, it's nothing it's a huge pain in the butt to go out there and remove the air cleaner every time but since i had to do some things on the honeydew list today i felt it was pertinent to you know, we'll drive to town uh, load up on supplies come back home and leave the air cleaner off the whole time and that way i can make adjustments to the, the carburetor uh, throughout the trip and hopefully get some things ironed out so right now i'm thinking that it might be a little bit uh on the rich side just based on how much steam and white smoke was coming out of there when i first started it up but I'm not going to dive into the carburetor yet without some more adjustments. So I will see you all tomorrow.